How's it going everyone? I'm Dylan, this is my cousin Carlo, this is All You Can Board, and today we have the first video in a brand new series we're gonna be doing here once a month, which is rating and roasting your board game collections. So, uh, I don't know about uh, you guys, but we are big fans, that on Reddit we've seen it, in our Discord and a bunch of other places, we're big fans of seeing other people's collections. We, we love seeing how people organize their shelves, you know, seeing what games they have in their collections and, and how people, uh, you know, do that. That's the, the, you know, there's a, there's a little like tag on Reddit it for like that you can put in your post if it's a collection post and right a, right a check whole, on my collection that's yeah. what it is yeah the comc or whatever so we thought it would be really fun and this was not our idea i have to give all the credit to one of our patrons his name's tom who came up with this idea and we absolutely loved it yeah thank you tom brilliant idea yeah so much fun uh to basically get you guys to submit photos to us of your collections and we're going to look at them and rate and review or uh, roast them uh based on our opinion and i just want to preface all this obviously um when we say roast we're not going to be like legitimately tearing down these collections we're not going to be like legitimately tearing down these collections we're not going to be like legitimately tearing down this collection the lie detective determined that was a lie do you mean to tell us that this is how your shelf actually sits yeah. at home this this randomly organized or what why you had you... or why did you have zero organizational yes production? because one thing i should <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> When we say roast, we're not going to be like legitimately tearing down these collections. We're big uh, advocates of you know any game that brings anyone into the hobby and, and makes them want to stay here is is fantastic. Even if I don't like a game or Carlo doesn't like a game, or if someone chooses to just play Feast for Odin all the time, Carlo doesn't yeah. care at ultimately. Maybe a little bit, but a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> but ultimately we just want more people in the hobby. So anything we say here is is absolutely in fun. If you've watched like roasts on Comedy Central, we're not even going to be hitting that level of of you know what we're talking about the comments no. we're making. But even those are done in fun to people that are, you know, friends with each other and things For like sure. that. For sure. It's very lighthearted and uh, the people who've sent these in know we're kind of going to do a bit of, uh, yeah, giving them a hard time about some things. But overall, we're just here to have fun. Yeah. And the last thing I'll say is that uh, all these submissions you're seeing today are from our Patreon community. Um, yes. Going forward, we are going to um, put an email address that anyone who's watching this video and watches any of our videos can send in their, their photos to potentially be featured on a future episode. But if you are a patron uh, on our Patreon, we're going to give preference to our patrons so that's an extra little perk that if you are and you want to see your collection featured here uh feel free to subscribe and send us your photo and we will get it in as soon as we possibly can definitely all right so we're going to jump right into this uh, this is gonna be fun so our first collection that we're going to be looking at here is from tom and this is the person who actually came up with this idea and he was yeah. kind enough to send us a photo of his collection as well um so here it is on the screen for you guys to see um Tom uh, let us know that he is very new to the hobby. Um, so this is his very small collection, which to be fair, like very small collection. I, I started with like two games and he's got a, a nice solid, what is this, 10 already here? So, yeah. or 11. So uh, so already a really great start. Um, but at the same time, Tom, I think the, the first step for you is going to be uh, driving down to your nearest Ikea or like-minded like store and picking up the largest uh, Calyx shelf that they possibly have <laughs> because we all know that you need to plan for the future when you're a board gamer. You can buy a small shelf and fill that thing up in two days. Um, and uh, start, start the collection off right. Even if it's empty at first, it's going to give you extra incentive to go out and buy games because you're going to want to fill all those empty cubby holes. What if right? he doesn't want to go the Calyx route? What if he wants some customizable, you know, modular sure. shelving system? I mean, that's more work and, and he's a new, he's new <laughs> to the hobby and maybe he doesn't, he needs to, I mean, Calyxes aren't super cheap either, but uh, you just need some sort of shelving unit to, to give yourself extra incentive to be like us and just buy a hundred right, right. as soon as you possibly can. Have a bunch can. of empty shelves, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, so, uh, first of all, I think you probably want to mention the fact that he's got Carcass on here and he says that it's one of his favorite games. Yes, in his email, he, no, he said it's his favorite Ooh. game in his collection is Carcass on. And, uh, he also admitted right away, knowing that we're big fans of, uh, Uwe Rosenberg, that he doesn't have any Rosenberg games yet, but that he is, uh, on the right team, uh, which is Team Agricola. So thank you, Tom. Glad to hear that. And I look forward to seeing Agricola be added to your collection, but, uh, very disappointing. Yeah. Immediate bonus points, not only from <laughs> having Carcass on in his collection, because it was the first game I ever bought was what got me into the hobby but the fact that it's his favorite uh, out of these games i would say out of these games is probably my favorite one as well not that i've played all of these but yeah uh, interesting choice. I'm going with Codenames Pictures first. Uh, I know that co uh, mm. it's a it's a different flavor of Codenames. I'd be curious to see if you've played the original Codenames and just wanted to go a different route for your collection, or if that's where you want to start. I've never actually played the the Pictures version. I've only played the actual like Word version. But also a uh, man of great taste, going the the proper route on the Crew and Sushi Go, not getting the original Sushi Go or the original the Crew. Not that there's anything wrong with either one. Right, right. But, but the better the version. You see in party yeah. right away. Yeah, the yeah. better version of both of those. Um, I don't know what Phase Ten is. 
All I know is it's a very uh, like sort of classic uh, card game that's like it's sold a ton of copies, mm -hmm. but I've never played it. I don't know anything about it, uh, how it actually plays. I also have no idea what Linky is. Linky, is I, I used to own. Really? Yeah. Is, is it a party game? It's yeah. It's a it's kind of hard to describe now, especially because I only played it like once and I don't have it anymore. But uh, you're essentially like giving clues that are all you having to like link one clue into the next to get from one word to the other one or something. I'm probably butchering it. Uh, I honestly okay. can't remember exactly. But I, I wonder for a while it was kind of fun. Uh, I obviously didn't keep it, but it, it was definitely like one of those like fun to play once or twice party games. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, Pruto is actually a pretty fun game. I don't know if you've played it. It's nice to see that in a, in a like small little collection. Uh, kind of. Well, I actually don't even remember how to play Yahtzee. I played Yahtzee <laughs> once when I was like 12 or something. You don't know but, how to play Yahtzee? Well, it's been like 20, over 20 years since I That's played it. It's like saying so. you don't know how to play like rock, paper, scissors. No, it's not. <laughs> that's what, that's way fewer rules. How we need to, we need to have a verdict on this one. We need to know like how absurd is this is it the to next not video? Not rock paper scissors. Yahtzee is Yahtzee. just Yahtzee is just you just roll five dice and you just like make poker hands essentially. That's all Yahtzee is. Fair enough. I don't doubt it. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I'm roasting Garlo now. <laughs> yeah, of roasting let's get Tom. back. You know, Tom, <laughs> you're not getting away from that easy. <laughs> Um, good choice on Root, obviously. We haven't played it. We've heard a lot of great stuff about it. Um, it's one of those games that like we want to get into, but the longer you wait to get into it, the harder it is to get into it, right. I think. But it's good to have, like, especially if you have a relatively small collection, it's good to have one game. Like This looks like the big, heavy game from the collection that's like, if he was going to maybe you know have multiple game nights with the same group of friends and explore a game, try out the factions, Root seems like the game that has maybe the most uh, to explore in it out of these ones. And the, the last thing I'll say is um, real big props for taking care of your Carcassonne box as well. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put up on screen here the comparison uh, to Carlo's oh, current Carcassonne box. For a man who loves Carcassonne so much, uh, he didn't take care of the box very well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, but this is a new... But look, it even says on there 12 million sold or something like that. When I bought my version, there weren't 12 million <laughs> copies sold. So well, mine that, is battle-worn, okay? It's seen battle, hundreds yeah. of games. But yes, it's sure. in shameful condition <laughs> and... Uh, Long, long overdue for an upgrade. Uh, he did mention as well that Century Golem Edition is his least favorite game in his collection. Makes me a little sad to hear that. Well, this I think is it's the, a pretty good game. Is this, is this a, like, Oh, an this is an world? Endless World. Never mind, say, sorry. I was going to say this. the box looked a little unfamiliar. I, know, I yeah. haven't played an Endless World, so... Yeah. Okay, because the regular Century Golem is just a yeah, solid game. Yeah, very good, yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, this is a for a 10-game collection or whatever, uh, this is a really good assortment of games. Looks like you've got some good variety in terms of... Uh, player count and just, you know, type of mechanisms. There's there's no auction mechanisms in here, though. Yeah, no auction, no, that, that no, no, no Uwe, no, yeah, no, Knizia. no Knizia. There's a couple couple misses there, Tom. Yeah, yeah. Um, no shelf, that's a big miss, too. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but wait, wait, I'm Tom, give you... I need to know, where do these games normally go when they're not just sprawled out on a table like this? Are they just, like, stacked on the floor? Is there a shelf know. somewhere? You know, there's something to be said for just always leaving them in the middle of your dining room table, because the anytime you have someone over, the in, the ex expectation is, like, oh, right, we're, yeah. we're playing a game. Yeah. Like, you, you are not being... Sit down to eat. Oh, I guess I'll put the games away. <laughs> make a big deal about the fact no, that, No, like... you just you eat in the living room. You, the, the table is for your games. You don't oh, okay. Them, so this is a away. specific game for table. Sure. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, but yeah, otherwise, thanks so much for sending this in, Tom. Yeah. Uh, let us know if you do end up picking up a shelf. It's like, this is a great start to the hobby. Um, and if you do pick up a shelf, I'm curious how quickly that shelf gets filled up just because of having to fill all those little cubby holes. All right, next up we have Kyle, who goes by I Am A Carrot on uh, our Discord, I believe. Yeah. Um, and he sent in a few different photos was different angles of his collection. This this is in contrast to the last one. We've got a, it takes four photos to see Kyle's collection here. So this is gonna be great. Uh, and then we're gonna start with this one first. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, before whoa, getting to the yeah, collection, I mean, we have to mention that at the very doing, bottom yeah. of his email, he put the most important line here, which is that Agricola is the best Uve. Oh, Agricola is the best Uve. Oh, f yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff right there. Okay, so not only is it clearly better than a Feast for Odin, but also the best Uve. Yeah, I unquestionably, it's two for two. This is two Team Agricolas right off the start. I don't know how I allowed us to start with two <laughs> Team Agricolas in this video, but it, it, it happened that way. Um, all right, so we're going to start with this photo here, which the most striking thing that I think both me and Carl are going to be very happy about here is the fact that he has an entire shelf dedicated to Reiner Knizia games. It's a beautiful um, thing. Look how many of them there are and how many of these, uh, like, I would... I would love to have a good chunk of these. <laughs> yeah. Tigers and Euphrates, I want. Ra, Through the Desert, Blue Moon, Stevenson's Rocket. Like, a few of these we have, right, amongst us. Yeah. Uh, if, Modern if you ever, Art, Blue Lagoon, like, if, oh. If you ever invite Carlo over to play board games, you're going to find that one of those games goes missing off your shelf. Oh, Most likely Tigers and Euphrates. It'll be Tigers and Euphrates. <laughs> He's going to have to put it on, like, a lock and chain around. Yeah. It. 
Like, uh, like good stuff, Kyle, but you're also, you're killing me here, showing me all these games I want <laughs> that I don't have. Um, I will say, from an organi- you're going to find that I do, uh, I talk about organization on shelves a lot, even though I'm not nearly the, the guy to talk to about being a master there. But uh, I will say that uh, it is interesting that you've placed High Society underneath this title I was so gonna strangely. Say, yeah. And you have an entire gap down here that you could easily fit some of these games Or on. High Society would just fit nicely well, on I guess, top right, of like Blue Lagoon, Modern Art, Babylonia yeah, right yeah, there. Like, like, why does it have to be underneath it's a very Royal Visit in a weird... Yeah, yeah very precarious uh, choice. You, I, I would highly suggest yeah. you uh, move that over to that little slot there. Unless, unless you, of course, there's a game that goes there that you are currently like not displaying mm, or something. But could be, could be. We want an explanation there, Kyle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then this kind of looks... Oh no, I was going to say this looks like kind of a space game shelf, but it's like kind of alternating almost. Eclipse, Beyond the Sun, Galaxy Trucker, you know, Imperium the Contention, which is a newer game. I actually kind of wanted to play that. Princess of Florence is an old, old classic. He's got a good uh, good mix of like old, old games, but also some, you know, pretty popular brand, like newer ones. Yep, and uh, this shelf in particular, or this section in particular some has some uh, nice heavy uh, heavy hitters here rising mm-hmm. sun hansa Tudukanaka, cryo N- notre dame ethnos gugong like some of these we've played some of them we oh, haven't barrage i'm dying to play i would yeah, love yeah. to play it that's a very solid shelf there yeah it um, really likes a sort of medium to medium heavyweight euros it looks like yeah. i mean not that rising sun falls in there but a nice little presence of res arcana down there as well yeah um yeah so One far i'm loving favorites. what i see here oh hang on hang on, oh, hang on. Yeah. renature nice cosmic yeah. frog these are games a lot of these are games we've covered on the channel within the last little while yeah. too cascadia yeah, Cascadia, another Some great solid, one. Solid uh, picks here. Yeah, and I yeah. also appreciate that you've, uh, for the most part, there's a couple of offenders here, but uh, <laughs> you have a nice scale from uh, height-wise, going from like highest height to lowest height. Although it's true. There is some cosmetic uh, sort of thing being taken well, into the account is, like, the way he These two he has shelves right here are just beautiful. And then you go over here, and for some reason, you have Beyond the Sun taking a dip down. You got right. uh, To be fair, Beyond the, the Sun has a very oddly shaped <laughs> box. Right. Uh, it didn't true. fit anywhere properly on my shelf before I decided to get rid of it either. But but yeah. overall, though, kind of, I, I have yeah. to say I'm pretty... Well, things I'm, are looking good so yes, far. Yes, they are. And then we get to this shelf that looks like I'm in a library or something. This I, is, like, <laughs> the part of the collection that is, like, kind of foreign to us. Like, yes. these are the kind of games that... We haven't played any of these, and probably about almost half of these I haven't even heard of. I'm just telling you right now, if we took off the GMT games and I looked at this, I would think that we were in a textbook <laughs> section at Chapters. <laughs> it's true. They do. They definitely look these like these yeah. kind of, like, dry, historical kind of, like, yeah, here's a map, or here's... yeah. These, but these I, are the games that when you invite uh, us over to play one of them, we go, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Although Millennium Blade seems a little out of place here. Like you've got all these kind of like, yeah, kind of war games and like all very like kind of, I don't know what, how to describe the art on those. Yeah. And then you've got this kind of like anime style, like it is the wacky. Like it, it, it definitely stands out yeah. a bit on this shelf. I don't really know what's Kyle, going on Kyle, if you're watching there, this but... video, comment on YouTube and tell us the story about uh, Millennium Blades there. I'm curious why what earned it a spot on this shelf and yeah, what we're missing. There's got to be another shelf it belongs on. Yeah. I don't know what it's doing there. Yeah, but, I wouldn't uh, say... I wouldn't say... I mean, again, I haven't played any of these games or heard of any of these games, but I'd say that um, this is the well, shelf that uh, I would relate to the least out of what I'm seeing. Here. Right. I'm, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure SPQR is the game that eventually became uh, Fort. Oh, like interesting. the small card game from from Leader Games or whatever. Go. I'm pretty sure that's a remake of SPQR. Nice little bit of uh, trivia there. Yeah, yeah. Um, moving on to this third shelf here, which uh, I think... Uh, I find it interesting that you got your four expansions for Agricola separate from your main box. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're just card. Choice. They're just they're usually just decks of cards, so they probably got put into the main box, right, uh, right, and right. then those are just kept to be able to show people that you actually have them. So I like the the, the bowls, the board game dishes for the I would components. Imagine those that's are for really components. nice. Yeah. yeah, that's something actually I want to get for yeah. mine. Uh, I'm a big fan of. Um, this nameless barcode game here that uh, I can't read because you've decided to <laughs> yeah. display oh, in such on, a way that <laughs> is impossible to read. Or maybe there's something about it you just don't want, didn't want us to see. Tell us the story yeah, about this yeah. uh, this mysterious game above the mind here. I like the bib- Biblios presence here, Bonanza, Fleet the Dice game, Sushi Go Party. Yeah. Um, I, again, I, I have no idea what this is on the left. With Yeah. Oh, is that monikers? Is, oh, maybe. 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 Could I be. I don't know. Again, if the title is on one of the sides of the box, and you're, you have a few offenders here for not being able to see the uh, the names of yeah, the, the yeah. games up here, 
that I think you need to correct, especially because I can see that the name is on this side of the box. Right. Or did you just oh, want people to see the... something. I can't remember. I've seen remember, it before in I stores. I remember seeing but this on yeah. Kickstarter, but... Uh, all I can see is the fur on that one. Also, again, why the mix? There was two-player only games up there, and then like Hanamakoji's two-player only, but it's down here. I, I like how and it's just like random roll and write, fleet the dice game in the middle of all these other like amazing games. Biblios, awesome, but like how are these organized? Games are just everywhere. Carlo and I each have our quirks with our shelves because like I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't organize my games by, by player count, but I know when I go to Carlo's, I can tell how he's organized. Yeah, yeah. His. So my shelf would be an offender for for Carlo's right. issues as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and really, speaking of which, we're probably gonna do a video where we go through our own collections at some point and roast each other or ourselves. And you guys can and, roast and, us too. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if these are modules these are, for... No, these are all from uh, Holland Spiel. So games usually designed by Amabel Holland, but this one is not. Meltwater, I listened to a podcast about this game. It sounds like a really sort of bleak, uh, depressing two-player only game, but sounds really interesting. <laughs> bleak, uh, depressing two-player. Uh, very, very much so. <laughs> like very, Well, look, a game of tactical starvation. Cool. Tactical starvation. Yeah, like wow, okay. it's uh, pretty, yeah. Pretty, pretty grim stuff, but this, I do want to try something by this company at some point. The shelf's pretty, like, well, not, I, I don't know, I was going to call it abstract, but I just mean, like, I don't know a lot of the titles, but Welcome to, I feel like, probably deserves a spot on a different See, cubicle this, again, the, the rule and right, like, why, <laughs> Fleet the Dice Game is here, Welcome to on its own down here, and what's, like, also, these are more, like, a lot of these are more, like, serious games, and you've got this agility, like, dog competition game. I've, I've never even heard of one. It. Really? Yeah, but I can't remember if I saw it on a, a crowdfunding thing or if I just saw I'm some post about okay, it. Okay, I was going to say, I'm going to go ahead and guess this is one of those games you have when you're a kid and you just end up keeping it <laughs> no. for, like, the nostalgia fact. Like, no, this looks definitely. like some old random... I've never heard of this. The final uh, cubicle here um, has just a yeah. few titles, but I want to just point out the most glaring thing about um, this section is that... He said he was Team Agricola, but let's be Agricola honest about the way, the, he best feels, yeah. the way he feels about this, because Fies Froden gets a nice, full little cubicle, and there's an empty cubicle where Agricola could stand, and instead he put it face down, just tucked away well, in the top little section But it's because here. of how giant Imperial Spells and Steam is, it provides the support necessary for Agricola to be nicely cushioned. I feel which, like... I have to say almost thank you right now to Kyle, because I've been tempted by Imperial Spells and Steam, and I know, I've heard about how giant the box is, but seeing how big it really is... Now I'm almost glad I haven't bought it yet because look at that thing. That's like three Agricolas. I, I don't know. There's there's something about Agricola being rejected to having to be on its own shelf with a game wow, that's not rejected. related to <laughs> compared to Holler Town, Feast Road, and the expansion game. They're all, all right. Ooh, that's hey, a bit of a reach. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I think that there's something he's trying to communicate here, even though he's Team Agricola. Maybe he's feeling unable to share his love for Feast Road, not wanting to upset Carlo too much, but well, this I mean, is what I'm gathering from what I'm certainly seeing certainly a bigger fan of a Feast Road than you are because he actually has the Norwegian's expansion. <laughs> it's not my fault I can't find it anywhere, okay? If anyone wants to tell me of a Canadian online retailer, I can buy it. I will place the order. And look, oh, you can tell he loves Agricola. Look at all the wear and tear on the box. You can see, like, that game has been played. That box you're has been You're just trying to make open. people... You're trying to justify your Carcassonne well, well, box at, from before. Look at the condition of the Feast Road. Has he even opened the it's box? because he wants to keep Unplayed. It immaculate. Every time he takes out, he's being careful with Agricola. It's just like, well, let's play some Agricola. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All, all right, all, that's it. <laughs> all things, all things considered, Kyle. Like we haven't said anything about Hollow Tower yet. <laughs> yeah. it's just, the Great woman on the box is like, what about me? <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Those games don't exist. <laughs> totally Feast Road and Agricola. A couple decks. Oh, the little mini dexterity shelf. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Men at work. I have Kabuto Sumo. You have. Mm -hmm. Uh, I haven't played Kabuto Sumo, but have you played Flick Fleet? I haven't. I haven't even, okay. even heard of it. Interesting to see the nice little dexterity game shelf, though. I'm going to predict right now that we don't see that with any other collections. The dexterity shelf, yeah. yeah. Good call. Um, overall, Kyle, um, I am. I would love to give this a super high rating, but of yeah. course you put Agricola uh, is <laughs> the best Uve, and that's uh, yes. knocks you at least five points down. Um, oh. I think just there's a couple organizational things you got to correct in terms of uh, some yeah. of the boxes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, honestly, I would probably just take a Feast Froden where you have these Gundam to um, or mech toys up here. Probably just put Feast <laughs> Froden right on top of there. But other than that, I think this is a fantastic collection. There's a bunch yeah. of heavy hitters, and you have an entire Kinesia shelf. I mean, you can't really... Go yeah, wrong at that point. Uh, yeah, Canizia Shelf, uh, our favorite Rosenberg games, some really good small box games with like Biblios, Bonanza, yeah. Innovation, that kind of stuff. So lots of nice variety in the collection. And uh, yeah, I'd be happy to play a lot of those games. Yeah. Next up, we're going to go to, uh, this is Brayden's collection. For those who don't know, Brayden is actually a friend of ours who's also one of our patrons. Um, and he's also one of the mods in our Discord community. So you might know Brayden from there. And yeah. Brayden was kind enough as one of our patrons to send in his collection. 
and uh, it's a nicely organized collection. I have to say that. Yeah, uh, it's uh, he's taking some care here. Uh, so let's take a look. Um, yeah, and he did mention that this is a somewhat outdated picture that he's acquired and sold some since then. But uh, we'll just focus on what we actually have here. Yeah, let's talk about uh, the most striking thing, of course, here, which is the fact that he's got an all-you-can-board yes. dice bag or a game boy or game yeah. boy game component bag right there, which is a nice rep representation there. Thanks, Braden. Perfectly displayed. Perfectly displayed. Yeah, yeah. nicely done, Braden. That's always how you have it, right? Like, you didn't yeah. just do that for the photo. Like you always have that on display. I would imagine, obviously. Um, also, and he's uh, even split it up, split up the Marvel Champions <laughs> content. Like he could have put this yeah. on the side, but if you want to look at all the Marvel stuff, you have to see it in the middle. I know you have the really newest like expansion that. for Marvel Champions. Does that mean that you replaced the All You Can Board dice bag with <laughs> it, or what, what did you do with that? I'm kind of curious. Yeah, really ha happy that you gave Marvel Champions and Gloomhaven each their own cubicle. Uh, I mean, that's exactly what they deserve. So, yeah. very very nice choices there. Very, uh, I have to say, as someone who I know is a is an avid board game collector, you were collecting board games uh, before me and displaying them and everything before me. Um, I am a little disappointed in uh, the size differences as we go across the shelf. You seem to have a lot of dips in size going from small games to large games, small games to large games in the heights of the boxes. Um, that could be very easy, easily uh, corrected. And you know what? On that note, um, I don't think these are even organized based on game game type or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we, what's, what's Azul doing between concept and wavelength? We've got basically four out of five of these games are basically high player count party games. I can't remember how many players concept was up. And then you just got Azul right in the middle. It's like, is he trying to hide it or is he trying to make it stand out? And and yeah, and even like you got Monikers and Secret Hitler over here as like, that would be like, they're hidden role games, but they're closer to the party of genre. Yeah. And there's a bunch of other games here you could probably include them with. I, I mean, I, I would, I'm just curious what your organization, uh, organizational approach was to your shelf. Like, or why you had, you... or why did you have zero organizational yes, approach? Yes, because one thing I should, <laughs> <laughs> wow, coming out swinging there. Um, it took you a second to hear what I even said there. Yeah. <laughs> zero organizational approach. You were just ready uh, to blow past that. Yeah. The, um, one thing I will say, and we haven't brought up yet, is I have a, a term I like to call, um, I forgot the term. <laughs> I guess I don't like to call it. What, it, what the whole thing I was going to get to is I like to uh, think that the top shelves, uh, um, top cubicles of a shelf mm. are where you put your favorite games, the games you want to highlight the most. And as you go down the shelf, you sort of have your like lower tiered games. And why is it because it's an eye level thing? Like people walk in and it's where their eye is drawn to? Or yeah. Is it... and, and also like where I've kept my games, usually there's something like a table in front that you sometimes can't see unless you look over or something right. like Fair that. Right. Fair enough. Okay. So top shelf billing, that's what it is. Mm, so shelf. you've given top shelf billing to Gloomhaven and Marvel Champions, which is great, as well as Wings. Span Quacks, Pandemic Legacy, and Micro, Micro Macro, which is great, uh, also awesome choices. I'm wondering if that went into the decision for some of the organization of the shelves, perhaps you wanted to highlight other ones. And if that's the case, does that mean that the bottom shelf here and, and games like Ticket to Ride and Catan are games that you like the least in your collection? Well, look, you can, can barely see Jenga. You just see a capital J. Good. It's blocked by Cards of Against Humanity, which instead, I think Jenga should at least be blocking Cards Against Humanity, if anything. Ooh, you don't like Cards Against Humanity? No, not, not a, a big fan. Well, no, well, not a okay. lot of uh, redeeming qualities to it. Yeah, and one night, Re one night revolution should be on the same spot as Secret Hitler, and uh, well, definitely Secret Hitler. Yeah. There's a yeah. There's some there's some clear. It's true. One clear night revolution, and then one night ultimate werewolf is up on this shelf over. And like at patchwork, what is what is a two player only <laughs> game doing between code names and just one? Yes. And like, because you said before, if it's one thing, if it's like all the boxes line up, but like. It's an anomaly, like, look, code names in just one are perfect next to each other. What have you done? This just, I'm, I'm sorry, Brandon, Brandon. But this just reeks of someone who just put games <laughs> on any shelf that they, as they took it out of the box, they just yeah. put it on the shelf. And uh, for such an avid board game fan, I think you deserve to, your board games deserve a little bit more respect I than mean, what you're showing. Even here. on this far right shelf, how hard would it be to just put the Kinesia games together? <laughs> just put My City Next to Quest for El Dorado. And it's a really easy, really easy adjustment that would make a huge difference immediately. Yeah, there's a couple of key things um, you could do here to really improve the the aesthetics of the shelf. Definitely give him Brayden the hardest time. Oh, anyone. for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's been, we, we know him. He told us, he's like, oh, just roast me. He's <laughs> sitting there and I'm being like, oof, man. Like, yeah, why did I send like, a photo? Yeah, a couple man. regrets. <laughs> No, honestly, he has a lot of very good games, really good and games. I have to say, I think I'm going to guess that this is the collection that has the most, like, the highest ratio of party games or high player count games, yeah. but I really like that, and I like that, I know you've mentioned that Brayden, uh, I mean, obviously more so before the pandemic, uh, hosted a lot of, like, 
you know, social deduction nights and game nights with high high player counts. And I really admire the sort of diversity in his collection in terms of like all kinds of, you know, there's the, the uproarious like laughing ones. There's the more like decryptos, more silent figuring out clues. Like, but he's got a really good variety of these higher high player count party games. The other thing I want to point out is, again, these two player games are just all over the place. Like Seven Wonders Duel, Lost Cities, Patchwork. Like if someone comes over and says like, Oh, let's play a good like two-player only game. Like you gotta look everywhere. These gotta be consolidated a little more, especially because there are so many good two-player games here. I think it's important for us to note that in Braden's email that he sent this photo with, he specifically said, um, the spicier the better, give me your worst, or something like that. Yeah. So uh we that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. You asked for it, Braden. Before anyone starts feeling bad for Braden, he asked for this. Yeah, so. Exactly. <laughs> well, also look. He's got Catan over here, and then the Rivals of Catan in a completely different box. <laughs> like, what is going on here? Braden, I know they're not like it's not an expansion, but still, I did mean, did you did you move these games around just to give us just fodder? to mess with us? Yeah. Is this, is, are you? Do you mean to tell us that this is how your shelf actually sits yeah. at home? This this randomly organized. But all things considered, yeah. roasting aside, uh, this is a great collection. I will yes, also mention much. that there's a lovely little uh, display at the top here that is from Braden's wedding uh, to his wife, where people got to sign this like is that Catan board is that or just like a board game it style could, board? I don't know if it's supposed to it looks kind of like Catan but I can't say for sure yeah, regardless it's it's definitely a board game inspired and everyone got to sign and that's just a amazing piece to put on top yeah. of the the shelf so, awesome awesome yeah. edition. and I like the color if that's a, I think it's a calyx shelf but I like the color of it like yeah. normally you see the the white or the the dark like this kind of color here but yeah. this is sort of like a, a light brown or it, it gives it I don't know I, I like it it matches the walls and everything really nice I wonder if they if you got if you got it like that or did you paint it or, or what I like it a lot hmm. Good, uh, good collection overall, Braden. Yeah, sorry, very good stuff. Sorry if you're uh, have a single tear coming down right now from everything we just said. Well, uh, I will, I will completely accept next time you come over for a game if you just come with a, a notepad and paper like Michael Scott in that uh, uh, that uh, episode, and you just list off things. Go boom, roasted. Boom, <laughs> roasted. Boom, roasted. All right, moving on to the next one, we've got TJ, who sent us in also four pictures of his uh, very large collection. Some of them are just zoomed in on different spots here, um, but he's got a very nice collection, and we're going to start with uh, this one right here. So this is the full look at the collection. We'll probably just zoom in on different spots here. Um, he's got a few different games that have got top shelf billing here, which I, again, this is something that this is... This, this is a big deal for you. This is what I believe is the key to a board game shelf, is what you put on the top of the shelf and also the first rung of the shelf here is very important. And you've got Midara, War of the Ring, Too Many Bones, which are I know are all very well-regarded games. I haven't played any of them. And I don't know what this... Reckoners, Reckoners it's based off a book series. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and guess that those games mean a lot to you. Uh, they're at the top <laughs> That's of the show. Um, but uh, we and we also see we on the very top shelf you've got Scythe and Oath and yeah. Summoner uh, Summoner Wars, right? Yeah. Um, and Aeon Zan, which are all uh, also big games. Fantasy Realms tucked away, not a big game, but a, by all accounts a very good one. Yeah, and of course. East Road and Scott Top Shelf billing, which I well, very... he did say, I believe it's TJ who mentioned that he specifically bought right. a Feast for Odin because of this channel. Exactly. Uh, finally, and, and it's some... one of his favorite games. So finally, one in the uh, Feast for Odin column. <laughs> uh, I don't, won. I don't even see Agricola anywhere here. Um, Good. Uh, I forgive you, TJ, but uh, maybe on BGA one day, if you haven't tried Agricola yet, maybe we can play it online. Yeah, he doesn't and, have any uh, room on the shelf for it. Anyway, so it's, <laughs> well, it's, it's already full. There's no room for Agricola. Um, <laughs> um, there's plenty of room. He's got, uh, how much room is there on this shelf in your patchwork on Friday? He's got plenty of room for Agricola. That's very true. You, you have uh, dedicated a, a very large cubicle to four, like, relatively, I mean, only Tom is bigger, but... Uh, the other three are very small games. And now I'm very curious about this Mountain Goats because Patchwork and Onitama are two player only and right. Friday is solo only. So I don't even know where, yeah, where does Mountain Goats fit? I've never heard of the game, but. Yeah. And, and like, but these are some solid games on the top shelf. Like oh, Terrifying yeah. Mars, Imperium Classics. Like these are all games. I was going to say, both these Imperium games are ones I'm trying pretty hard to track down right now. So a little bit envious of that. Yeah. I hear they play very well solo. An entire Marvel Champions shelf with all the uh, big box expansions. Yeah, that's probably thanks to you. Yeah, and look and look how they're bursting at the seams. Like all the sides yeah, of the box true. are coming out. I can, I can just imagine how full of cards those are. If you yeah, those seem like they get a lot of play. Yeah, so I, I am. it's very interesting to me that you have Clever Cubed and uh, not either 
of the first two because normally you see someone with like the first one they realize they don't need the second two is there a reason you didn't get the first two or have you played the first on the apps and you wanted to have one physical mm -hmm. i'm very curious about that also very curious as to why under falling skies another solo only game <laughs> is separate <laughs> from friday why don't you keep your solo games together what's going on here we're gonna get some people comment and be like never have i heard people so concerned with the organizing of shells but that's what we're talking about yeah here. that's why we got to show off ours one day but, <laughs> yeah, exactly uh, but yeah, great games on that shelf anyway. This next one here, he's got Ares Expedition, which we were kind of, I, th I think you liked it a little more than me, but uh, maybe a bit, a bit lukewarm on. He's got it yeah. separate from Terraforming Mars. The Minecraft game, I don't even know a whole lot about, do you? No, me neither. I okay. I didn't even know there was one when I saw it at Ravensburger. Like I th at first I thought it was a puzzle or something, but mm. I didn't realize it was a full fledged board game. I can't even read what it says. Buildings and biomes. Minecraft Builders and games. biomes. Builders and biomes. Yeah. The other one I want to bring attention to is the fact that uh, how much of a pain is it when you want to play Lost Ruins of Arnak that you have to move four games off the top of it to yeah. get at it? That's, uh, I, I think it's interesting how you position them there because normally you don't see someone use a game as sort of a platform for four standing vertical games. But right. every time you want to play Lost Ruins of Arnak, you got to pull each of those four games off the shelf. That's uh, yeah. Do you not play it a lot? or? What's and the... I'm kind of curious because we've seen so far, I think most of the collections we've looked at so far have either been... I think most of them were sta vertical stacking. This one has a mix of vertical and horizontal yeah. stacking, but this is the first shelf where you, like you said, you have both. Like, what's the methodology behind this? What's, what's going on here? <laughs> I mean, I've got a mix on mine too, but usually my vertical ones are just because I couldn't fit them anywhere yeah, else. Yeah, because they're small but, small games, but here, yeah, yeah I interesting. Do, but. I do admire some of the, like, I, and I admire this in your collection too, is, is like, I display mine in one simple way. I just stack them. Whereas you have ones where it's like, hey, I've got this one stacked, uh, you know, upwards facing it with a bag in front and then also some stacked in front mm -hmm. of it. Like there's some actual like interior design going on True. here yeah. in the way that you're doing it. Whereas mine- I like, like the way some of those I'm things not, are displayed. I'm not visually uh, talented enough to come up with <laughs> looks right. like that. Right. But, right. Yeah, right. Yes, right. Agreed, Correct. yes. <laughs> Good point, excellent. <laughs> um, the uh, yeah, one thing- I was gonna say. Yeah, that. there's, you need to show a little bit more respect <laughs> for, for games on your shelf when you have Spirit Island, the expansion, but for some reason you've stuck Robinson Crusoe between them. I mean, it would be very simple to just take the expansion and put it right underneath uh, Spirit yeah. Island or vice versa. And, and here's the thing, if it was in a different collection, it wouldn't even stand out, but it's the, the contrast between what you said, like the nicely staged shelves, like you have these ones with like Azul angled a certain way and these like really nicely things displayed and then you got Robinson Crusoe between two Spirit Island boxes It's the yeah. fact that they're on the same shelf like that is just does it say anything about your love for on Mars that you put it on the same shelf as Tainted Grail uh, or did you just <laughs> are you one of the people who really did love Tainted Grail? I'd be very curious Ooh. as well but, <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> no, but uh, it's also I can tell again with the top shelf building it's lower down So I think yeah, I was Although, gonna say I don't know if your top shelf building applies to uh, to TJ I know I don't do that with my games But if you look at TJ's bottom shelves here is there's a lot of big, true, heavy boxes true. down here. I mean, Descent, Legends of the Dark, that's a fairly new one. Yeah. Mage Knight's not new, but it is a very like cherished game by most people. At the very least, I would suggest just taking the Gloomhaven um, compartment and moving at least one tier up, just so that if anyone does view your collection with that lens, they know that you enjoy Gloomhaven more than Tainted <laughs> Grail. That would be my first suggestion, but... Um, Descent is a game that I actually included in one of our videos that I wanted to buy and, and I'm hoping to one day pick it up because it is a pricier game, but very curious to hear what you think about that one. I do think he mentioned also that he got Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea because it was on a crazy sale. I think I saw the same sale online, but he said he has no idea when that one's going to be played. So yeah, for sure. I have no idea how many of these are, are Shelf of Shame. Uh, I don't think he meant. Oh no, he did. He mentioned War of the Ring, Undaunted, On Mars. Oh, there Wait you go. That answers it. And Heroes of Land, Air, Land, and Sea are all Shelf of Shame. Your Shelf of Shame includes War of the Ring, and you put it at the very top spot of your shelf. See, top shelf what? building isn't a thing for most people. But then why is it up there? Why? Like, there, you could put. It's a heavy box. Oh. He doesn't want it. He doesn't want other games on top of it weighing it down. It's probably going to be out of print one day. It's a very cherished, expensive game. It's got to be somewhere nice and safe. I think you could. But, I, think, I think you should take at least Jaws of the Lion and put it uh, put it up there where War of the Ring is. Give it a nice spot at the top of the shelf. When War of the Ring has been played and you, it, you get it off the shelf of shame, it earns that top spot on the shelf. That's how I would operate here. <laughs> you gotta you gotta you gotta really respect each tier. So when you move it up, it, there's a meaning to why you're moving it up on the shelf. That's how I view it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, all, all things considered, there are some really good games in this collection. Um, and uh, just a distinct lack of 
uh, Uve games, I would say. I don't, I don't know how many there were that I remember seeing. Wow. The first person who's on Team Feast for Odin who bought the game because of you, and you're calling <laughs> oh, him out. Right. And you're calling the guy out for his distinct lack of Uve games. <laughs> I forgot There's that, always uh... room on Team Agricola for, for more, TJ. Oh, no, I'm gonna, ungrateful. I'm going to lose my Feast for Odin support. Wow, this is you're how right. you treat the I, I, fellow I, Feast I, I apologize, TJ. You don't need to have an Uve shelf because you have the only Uve game that matters. Uh, awesome collection. TJ, yeah, very you. nice stuff. Thank you for sending it in. Uh, looks like you have an awesome shelf. I'm sure that you have a ton of. Fun. Yeah, and this was uh, his, not just his collection. It's TJ and his wife live. Uh, so nice collection, both of you, and uh, we would love to play a bunch of those games with you both sometime. Yeah, and the last one we're going to look at uh, is uh, from either Lewis or Louis. We're not really sure the, for full pronunciation, yeah. uh, but it's one of the two. And uh, he sent us in this beautiful little shot of his shelf with some uh, excellent artwork there and three games displayed as well. Which another one for too many bones. We have a there's a a lot of people who have too many bones and who are displaying it prominently yeah, i mean i yeah. guess when you have a game like too many bones you do want to have that proudly displayed so on you your do shelf, believe right? in top shelf billing well no it's just <laughs> it's just the display uh, i didn't say i believe in top shelf billing necessarily in terms of how good the game is right right more right. from a collector's standpoint yeah um, but even so not everyone does it right off the bat another uh, person with tainted grail <laughs> sorry know. Right off the bat, uh, I just want to say that I noticed you have Dwellings of Elder Veil, vale, um, which is uh, mm. fantastic. I've been trying to find a copy of that. If at any point you uh, don't uh, don't want it anymore, let me know. I might uh, be interested in taking that off your hands. Um, but yeah, the, the, I have to point out the uh, the fact that you have Tainted Grail at the very, very top spot of your shelf that a lot of people are going to notice. And you've An entire cube for Tainted Grail. And you've relegated Gloomhaven to a, sharing a cube with Welcome To at the very bottom here, <laughs> which uh, is beneath Gloomhaven, really. Uh, I think you should consider I think it's fine where it is. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a lot of big box games, though, Lots, like Gloomhaven, yeah. Too Many Bones, Kingdom Rush, which which, you know, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, Louis. Uh, not a big fan of Kingdom Rush. I hope you enjoyed it more than I did. But I have um, to say, there's. Uh, I'm really impressed with some of the games you have in, the, in this collection because there's oh, a yeah. lot that like are like really good titles. Like Castles of Burgundy's there. Even games like Canopy, which I'm a huge fan of, but isn't like I wouldn't say it's not obscure, but it's also not like largely super popular yeah. yet. Anyways, um, you've got he's that. got both the clever roll and rights. He's got King's Dilemma, which you're a huge fan of, that yeah. I've been dying to try. He's got Sleeping Gods, very power, clearly. Power Grid King. Oh, yeah. Power Grid's a classic. Pandemic Legacy. Yeah. Scythe. Uh, I've heard stuff of a vindication. I haven't played it myself. It's one I really want to try. Yeah. Yeah. This shelf down here, uh, Teotihuacan. I can't see what's after, but Teotihuacan is a great game. And then the three here were all in my like top thirty or forty ish when we did our top fifty. Really Isle of Sky, shelf. Glass so uh, Glass Road, and Santorini are all awesome games. That Real might, nice. That might be my favorite cubicle on the shelf. Oh, honestly, of, yeah. In know. terms of just all around quality games, are really really good games there. I've never even heard of this Ignite the Freeze. No. Have you? No. I, based on the fact that it came with two boxes like that so i'm wondering if this was a kickstarter probably yeah with deluxe editions yeah taverns of teethenthal great deck builder Radlands, oh yeah radlands me. nice very nice um yeah there's a there's a lot of good representation on the shelf battle line i'm sure you're happy about oh, as well battle line yeah yeah this is all around like i don't even have that much to, to roast you on no there's a there's some really good stuff here yeah although i will say uh, there, this one shelf over here could use a little love in terms of organization, as well as the one over here on the on the left. A Draftosaurus teetering on the edge of despair yeah. here. I think is, these uh, bottom corner shelves are the ones that are like equivalent to like that closet at home where you just throw stuff yeah. in and just close it when people are coming <laughs> yeah. over. Like it's like oh, whatever, I'll figure that out later. You just jam stuff in the corner. So. For sure. That's what those look like to me. Still some decent games in there. I mean, some of them I haven't played. Guerrilla Marketing is an interesting one that kind of, uh, I think, came out at a, an odd time beginning of the pandemic, and it's a big, big party game that I think a lot of people missed out on, but I'm curious about that one. Yeah. And then some other old classics, Formula Day. Fireball Island is another one I've never tried. Yeah, but I heard a lot of um, that. Yeah, yeah, there's Coloma. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of really, really good titles in here. Like, all Wait. the ones that I would recommend to start a collection with, even, or, like, consider getting, are represented pretty much. A even lot the of them, yeah. Castle of Burgundy. Like, there's a lot of really good ones. I would say two things that stand out right now as well. Yeah. I'm impressed that most collections I've seen that have at least one zombie side box have, like, five to ten zombie side yeah, boxes the entire and this is... one look he he restrained himself to only the one box so good for you first off and secondly 
This might also be the first time, or at least first time in a while, that I've seen a shelf that has only the base game of Dominion. Yeah. He has restricted himself on the expansions for now. Uh, restricted himself where he, after one he was like, I've seen enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Or he got rid of expansions, he's still trying to get rid of the base game, who really yeah, knows. But yeah. uh, No, all in all, there's like uh, not a lot I can really say about that. Uh, thank you so much for saying yeah. it in. Uh, a fellow Canadian. Uh, he did He did even, I, we didn't, we kind of let him off the hook easily, but he even pointed out that we could roast him on the fact that there's a serious lack of Canizia games. Yes, and I mean, there is, and I, and I feel like we could say that uh, about anyone who didn't have a representation of Canizia, but I, I'm glad that you you acknowledge it yourself. It probably means it's something you're working on and actively trying to fix in your collection. <laughs> a problem so. you're trying to rectify. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so that's what's important. I also have to say, we quit, we did gloss over these other two that are on display that he mentioned in yes. the email or among his favorite games of all time. We have not played Eclipse or Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth, uh, which is probably why we kind of glossed over them a bit. But uh, yeah, after heard knowing how... Heard good things Yeah, heard good things. So after knowing how important they are to you, maybe we'll, we'll try to check those out at some point. But Yeah, thanks so much for sending in the yeah. photo. Great collection again. Very nice very stuff. Nice to display. Those are all the ones we're going to look at today. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed checking out uh, other people's collections, keep in mind that you can have your collection featured. All you got to do is send us your photos to the email address I'm putting on screen right now. Just let us know uh, what you would like us to, if you have any thoughts of like what you'd like us to talk about. Uh, obviously we're going to the rate and roast it how we see fit but if yeah. there's certain things you want to call out or give us some context of some of the games feel free um and just send it to the email address your photos we might get a whole lot of these in at once we already got two minute even feature in this one video from our patrons yeah. so we can't promise it'll always get into the next one but we are going to keep them on file and try to get to them over time as much as we can we're going to do this once a month so we're going to be doing it uh yeah as often as we possibly can and, and covering as many collections as we can but we love seeing other people's collections it gives us ideas for ours and it gives us some fun to like talk about them so yeah and we'll be sure to show off our collections in a little more detail at some point on the channel too to open ourselves up for some roasting yeah and again one more one more time to reiterate we uh everything here we're saying is obviously in fun we think these collections are awesome and everyone's yeah. uh has all amazing collections game it's and honestly some of the diversity in these collections is uh, better than even what i've got on display here in terms of like there's a lot of these games i would love to have in mind that i don't have so yeah uh, awesome everyone's collection. at their own stage of the, of the hobby and some people have games that they have just so that when other people come over they have games for other people to play and whatnot so yeah no no one collection is better than any other yeah otherwise thanks so much for watching guys and yeah remember sending your collections also include the email address in the description below and if you're not on our discord and you haven't heard of it our discord link is below as well as our patreon link and our merch link if you're interested in any of those things in supporting us or just chatting with us on the discord find the links below and otherwise thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time see ya